Righty O. Quick sip. We're going to do three part Swiss ball series over the next three weeks. So today will be beginner, next kind of intermediate, and we'll do an advanced one where you probably won't want to show up. That's where you're supposed to say, no, 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 bring it. Cool. So we'll start with the stretch. First, we'll open up front panel. Then we'll get into the intercostals. Then we'll get down deeper into the lower back. The reason I'm going to do that, uh, that order is because the muscles in your lower back, the muscles that attach from your shoulder to your neck are in a constant tug of war for your rib cage. So by loosening up the rib cage, you can actually relax these muscles sort of indirectly. Because breathing is the most important thing we can do. So if you get pain bending backwards, try to keep your lower back as high as you can. If you feel good bending backwards, then try to get your entire spine touching the ball. And you just want to go back and forward, breathing out as you go back. And just pay attention to what side is tightest. Now, for example, if the right side is tight, like mine is, you can just sort of come up onto your left side with exposing the right and then opening that right up. So going forward, get a set of muscles coming back, gets a different set of muscles through there. So I can feel that all the way down to there. That's a bit of a blinky. Now, if I want to get those muscles in the lower back, the QL, we can start by going further this way. The further over you go, the further down the back you get. And from here, we can rotate forward, rotate back, and see what fibers of that muscle gets tight or needs stretching. Because you've got an anterior, medial, posterior fiber of that particular muscle. So stretching is best done when you're doing pre-exercise stretching, you want to be as specific as possible. Because we're always doing constant input to the brain. And the brain responds better to specific input. So I've got a little bit through here. So just to give you an example of how it would work. I'm trying to open up here. So it's not a two dimensional stretch. I'm just opening up where I feel tight. Moving around, it's more dynamic. But wherever this is on you, make sure you do it you. So for my lower back, I get there. So I can feel that opening up through there. Now with my heel on my right, I'm going to try and kick it away from my body as far as I can and reach as far as I want as I can with my hand. I'm going to come out of it slowly, very slowly. Now, let's give a bit of love into the other side just to see where it's at. So fairly handy, right? A little bit there. So mine's more specific to here. Just where my spleen is. Not to see any spleen symptoms, so so far so good. So you just want to be specific. So I need more on my right. So let's spend more time. Playing here and getting that loosened up. I could also finish here if I wanted to. I can make an air angel. 
it doesn't hurt. I don't want to feel tightness in my pecs, so I just let my arms hang on that angle where I feel the tightest. Deep breaths. Just let my arms kind of get stretched out by gravity. Two thirds of the breath through the belly. The last third through the chest. Just go searching for new places. So it's funny, in an anatomy book, it'll show you that we've got anywhere between 360 or 460 muscles. But in reality, we've got one muscle hanging out in about 400 different places. So I'm going to... One more quick stretch, or two more quick stretches. For the lower back. As requested. So when my knee's on the ground, my actual my patella isn't. It's this top bit just above. Here. That as close as I can. Now I'm going to start by getting my heel to touch my bum. My knees forward, my patella tendon is on the ground. And holding those two points there, I'm going to come up. And that should feel right there. Now, how we want to get into the lower back, tuck the tail under, lean forward, trying to bring the ball with us. We can have this top leg, front leg, on any angle we want, wherever the stretch is. So wherever you feel you need it. About there. It's right there. Now I'm going to bring up this right arm. I'm going to reach for the roof, grab the other side, and then side bend to the left. Now from here, I can rotate, rotate to the left, rotate to the right, and feel that stretch all the way down to there. There's a big line of fascia that goes and kind of spirals through like that. So that's one way you could do it. If you wanted to get more hip flexor involved, bring your put, push your foot into the ball, activate that, and then try to pull yourself over. And I'll certainly get into it as well. On both sides, I don't want to walk around in circles. And my left quad is tighter. That's about it. So for this one on me, I'll just keep this position here. So I can go through the checklist, tuck under, get tall, side bend, reach, rotate, do what I need to, and make it as specific as possible. So I might have some tension around my stomach and my spleen, because that right where the spleen stomach meridian goes. That's where the tightness is. So keep in mind when we're stretching, we're also working with the acupuncture meridians as well. So the stomach meridian runs right through the middle of the thigh. So we're actually opening up that meridian, which helps pump the organ. So anytime we do movement or therapy, we're doing a lot more than we know. So from here, I can also change the angle of my, my shin. Just get into those tight areas. So one more stretch for the lower back. Nice gentle one. Then I hug the ball. With my legs, arms out, palms up. I'm going to go to the side as far as I can before this shoulder lifts off the ground. So if it lifts off there, I'm going to stop, come back. Very 
breathing out as I fall to the side. If you feel you need to hang out on a certain spot, take a few extra breaths. That's cool. Do one more reach. Okay. Does that help with that one? Yeah, it did. Thank you very much, Matt. So that's some ways of doing it. But keep in mind if the more you do it, it doesn't loosen up, it's likely compensating with something. So it might be worth investigating kidney, colon, diaphragm, potentially even lung function as well. But that's another group session. So, all right. The first thing we're going to do is just a gentle session today. Remember, this is only this is for more people with low level pain, maybe even high level pain. And especially if you're new to this thing. But all we're gonna do is 10 reps, five each side. We're gonna keep, do that next. Hips parallel, shoulders parallel. We're gonna come to the side, keeping everything straight and hold. Back to the center, out, making sure belly button lines up with my nose, everything straight. Just find your balance point. Naturally, one side will be a lot harder than the other. Keeping it straight all the time, bro. I've completely lost count, but I think I usually do about 10. So I'll do the last one. You guys finish off the reps. I'll get set up for the next one. You guys should have one more each side. So when you finish those, find a nice spot to kneel. Now this one's a bit technical as well. So we're gonna start in this position. So you can see my arms, torso on an angle, my leg and my torso on an angle. These stay the same. So when we roll out, they're gonna increase. As I roll back, they're gonna decrease. So they stay the same going out. My hands are separate. 
essentially I'm going to roll forward as if I'm reaching for that wall over there. It's really important from a neurological point of view that these angles stay the same. So the most two common ways people do it wrong would be like this or like that. The guy who invented the exercise showed me how to do it. And it's important that we, almost like a frog, we keep that the same. But what we also want to do is draw the tummy in, keep good alignment, and hold that the entire time. Find your balance point, hold, and then come back. We're aiming for about 10 to 12. You can feel this anywhere except the lower back. Do three more. Done. <clears throat> Straight into the jackknife. We will go. So on try this angle. But to make this harder, so it's very easy at the start. Just keep it in nice and close to make it harder. There, if you've got another ball and you can't support your own body weight, you can put another ball on the top or a chair or something that'll hold you up. Essentially, you have a glass of water on your back and you don't want to spill a drop. Bring it in. Last three. Okay, finish off. Superman. Alternating Superman. They come as far forward as you can just grip the ground with your toes. So first, we're going to come up with one leg, then the opposite arm, thumbs up on a 45 degree angle. I'm going to hold this for about 10 seconds. Really good if you feel pain bending forward. If you've got pain bending back, then maybe just do a little and a half repetitions. Make it work for you. Well, I'm gonna do one more each. I'll see if I can check how you guys are doing.
Too bad, not too bad. And when you finish those, I'll have a minute break. Ask any questions. And we'll start from the start. And next week we'll do more advanced versions. The week after that we'll do ridiculous versions. But if you can get these four exercises down pat, they'll go a long way of helping you back pain. The time wouldn't be wasted just mastering these basic movements. Okay, so I'm going to get a stick for this one just to illustrate what I'm talking about. I use a stick or a rod with patients and clients just to illustrate biofeedback. So I balance that on their hip. They can also hold it with open arms like this. So I'm going to go to my left first. Keeping everything straight. So I'm not getting lazy, I'm keeping everything up. So my left hip, my right shoulder are working to keep my spine in check. Now my right hip, my left shoulder are working together. But if my arms are like that, I'm not really doing much. The lower body burden. So I'm here. You see the level of the stick hasn't changed. So that's how you use that. One more to the right, running out of time. You naturally have an easy side and a side that's a bit harder with that one. So if you wanted to hold the hard side a bit more, that could be quite wise. Ford Borwell next. Just rolling out, drawing in, holding that posture. Two more. As every PT says, two more.
Okay. Uh, Jack Knight. Or do I angle this one? So remember, trying to get nodes between some index. So you notice we've done a basically a back exercise, two front exercises, finishing with the back one. So it's nicely balanced out. So one leg, opposite arm. I want to think of lifting the rib cage off the ball. Done. Good warm up to do would be so the good warm cool down to do would be the one the stretches that you did to warm up and just hold them a little longer. That'll keep you in good alignment. Hopefully, keep tight muscles loose and the loose muscles tight. So next week we're going to get a little bit more harder. So until then. Thanks a lot, buddy.